What's up guys? This week we've got a Pokemon that's actually a grown-up baby. That's right, it's Poliwrath, the tadpole Pokemon. Even though it's not really a tadpole anymore, it looks like a full-grown frog, but whatever. For some reason, this thing is a very angry tadpole, here to fight even with its guts showing through its skin. For me, Poliwrath always reminds me of the Pokemon Adventure manga, where it's one of Red's signature Pokemon. In that manga, it always looked like a superhero. And for those of you who haven't read the Pokemon Adventures manga as a kid, you probably remember Poliwrath as Chuck's ace in the hole even though there's a whole bunch of other fighting types that he could have used instead, but we'll get to that. So on that note, how good was Poliwrath actually? And in this video, we'll go over these competitive formats. Man, look at those hands. While Poliwrath's gloves would be locked into permanent fists in later generation, at this point it was some sort of karate frog. Unfortunately for Poliwrath, being more of a fighting type wasn't exactly a good thing in Generation 1. Sure, you might think a super effective move on the dreaded Tauros would be nice, but Poliwrath didn't actually have a guaranteed 2-hit KO on Tauros. It couldn't even 1-hit KO Chansey. Actually, what Poliwrath did have going for it was access to the best boosting move ever made, also known as Amnesia. With an Amnesia boost or two under its belt, even a base 70 special attack could be quite threatening. Amnesia actually short ups Poliwrath's psychic type weakness pretty well, because if it could get a boost up on the switch, it suddenly boasted a real nice special defense to go along with its already great physical defense. And Poliwrath actually forced a good amount of switches due to its access to a swirling spinning hypnotic stomach. That all sounds good in theory, so what's wrong with Poliwrath? Well for one, it was just straight up outclassed by Slowbro. Slowbro had better defenses, better special attack, better HP, and maybe most importantly a way better typing. That's actually a lot of things better. And though sleep is a crippling status, paralyzation was still amazingly good in Generation 1. So Slowbro's Thunder Wave was a worthy contender with Hypnosis. It actually might have been even better, considering while it was setting up, it could also just spread status. Whereas Poliwrath had Sleep Claws to think of. And yes, he even had Sleep Claws in Nintendo Cup, so there you go. That psychic typing helped out Slowbro a lot. Starmie was a good counter to both of them, but it appreciated getting paralyzed a lot less than Slep, to be honest. Since Sleep at least protected someone else. Polyrath also did really bad against fast electric types, who frequently crit it through its amnesia, and Zapdos in particular could drill peck it after boost as well for huge damage. Other problem Pokemon included Victory Bell, Venusaur, and Gengar. Slowbro itself might be a toss-up, and then it honestly came down to crits. Honestly, Polyrath had okay tools, it was just, come on, why not use Slowbro, or even Golduck? It ended up in underuse of Smogun, and down in the H tier in Nintendo Cup, the absolute lowest placing for Pokemon that were still ranked. Polyrath's typing was already an issue, but in Generation 2, it was its attacking stats that started letting it down. 85 attack and 70 special attack really aren't that great, unless you have Belly Drum. And thanks to a special New York Pokemon Center event, Polyrath was able to combine another amazing boosting move to harken back to Amnesia with a lovely kiss, which had a higher success rate than Hypnosis. And this begs the question, how does Polyrath even kiss people? Poliwag has lips, I think, or is that his nose? I don't know. But once it evolves, they just disappear? We know the spiral is in its stomach, so could its lips be those little dots above its swirl? How does this thing eat? How does it kiss? What does it know? Do they know things? Let's find out. Anyways, Polyrath's strategy in Generation 2 was completely different. Body Slam spread around some of that sweet paralysis Slowbro was dishing out in Gen 1, but Polyrath was really waiting for the opponent's team to be weakened. And that was showtime. With Belly Drum up, Polyrath could potentially sweep, but that was a big potential our punching tadpole didn't always fulfill. Unfortunately for Polyrath, its speed still wasn't quite sweeper material, and its typing even less so. Exeggutor, Starmie, and its old nemesis Slowbro all completely walled it. Exeggutor and Starmie's extreme prevalence meant that Polyrath really wasn't seen around that much, even in Underuse, where Gyarados, Lantern, and the Grass-type starters took it out. It went up a bit in Nintendo Cup rankings, all the way to C tier, but it still wasn't making any great shakes to the meta. The advent of Selac Berryman substitute Belladrum was suddenly the obvious choice for any Polyrath looking to make a splash. With Water Absorb at its disposal, Polyrath could come in on opposing water types and attempt to set up, which now with substitute protection and a speed boost could be quite deadly. Its sub Selacberry played extremely similar to Charizard, except for the typing difference, and that difference was quite important, giving Polyrath potentially favorable matchups against Suicune and other water types like Milotic. Polyrath didn't really have the coverage or the power behind its punches to run quite normal sets, so its other options also focus on boosting its power either via Choice Band or the tried and true Sub Punch set, which was enabled particularly well on Polyrath with Hypnosis, a sort of poor man's breloom. That last phrase could give you a hint that Polyrath still wasn't winning any awards this generation. Polyrath's lean into its physical side meant it never ran water moves anymore, so Pokemon like Claydol and Aerodactyl frequently destroyed it. Aerodactyl in particular was in a tier of Pokemon that outsped Polyrath, 
Scythe, even after its select boost, along with Jolteon and Crobat, two other incredible counters. Past that, Dragonite, Metagross, Salamence, Celebi. Really, there are so many things that just ate Polyrath up by resisting one of his moves and then just being better than it. Its limited move pool made it super predictable, and even if set up, common overused Pokemon walled it or beat it. It was a big threat in underuse, which was now enough of a tier for that statement to actually mean something. But poor old Polyrath sort of just performed like what it looks like. An angry Poliwhirl. Polyrath's slowly fading relevance, if you can even call it that, was slightly stemmed in Generation 4 by the physical special split, which finally gave it some water type moves to put to work. Unfortunately for Polyrath, that's all it really got. Well, except from a whole nother bunch of Pokemon that countered it, like Azelf and Yuxi. Even in underuse, Polyrath suffered the prevalence of bulky grass types like Leafeon, Venusaur, and Tangrowth, and the ever present slow bro seemed to follow it around constantly ruining its day. Its best bets set-wise were to rely on its mix of bulk and power, like Sub Punch, Salak Belly Drum, and Rest Talk. But for Polyrath, that was far more in the Master of None category rather than Jack of All Trades. It dropped down to Never Used at the bottom of the pond, a small fish in a world of big players. At this point, I think it should come as no surprise that Polyrath would never be a big league player. Generation 5 did, however, give it some new tricks. After giving up the idea that it might ever be a powerful threat, Polyrath settled into its new role as a utility player. This moveset very obviously has no real cohesion, just as Polyrath's stats don't point it any one way, but it was a Swiss army knife, at least in the lower tiers. Able to block water types, absorb status, spread burns and poison, and most notably, phase. Circle Throw made Polyrath a reliable phaser against many low tier threats. The influx of fighting types in Gen 5 made Polyrath even less likely to shine in any overused team, as it was outclassed 6 ways to Sunday. Oh yeah, and Jellicent was just straight up immune to both of its stats, so yeah, good luck with that. And if we want to use a water fighting type, we have a new one. His name is Keldeo, so yeah, I'm sorry Polyrath. But in low tiers, its one niche of phasing at least gave it a potential niche that kept it out of never use. Although rarely use isn't such a great place either if you're aiming for prestige. Its other stale sleep talk and sub punch sets were still around, but Polyrath's circle throw was one of the best things that set it apart. To contrast, its brethren Politoed got an entire metagame ban because of his new tool in Gen 5, so there's an inferiority complex if I've ever heard of one. And actually, Politoed ended up being one of the only teammates that made Polyrath viable in VGC 2012. While not nearly as good as Drizzle, Polyrath did get its own rain related Dream World ability, a Swift Swim, which let it pair nicely with its cousin in VGC. If Polyrath could predict right and get a belly drum up, it was downright terrifying. In the rain, outspeeding everything and hitting with 600 attack. It could even one-hit KO everything out of rain. But in rain, a plus 6 waterfall decimated everything in Polyrath's sight. Citrus Berry was a common item choice to alleviate the dangers of Belly Drum, but Polyrath could potentially also function as a simple rain sweeper with Life Orb and Earthquake, or even a water or fighting gem. But to do so was to ignore what made Polyrath special, one of the only things it had. Its other sets was a supported set utilizing Water Absorb and Surf partners like Ludicola or Polytilt to heal. Don't get me wrong, this set wasn't amazing by any means, and it lost hard hard to Rage Powder, Follow Me, Fake Out, and especially Jellicent. And even if it did set up, good luck keeping it alive long after cutting its HP in half. But if it went off, boy did it go off. And for Gen 6, pretty much nothing changed for Polyrath, except that it got one more type it was weak to. No reliable recovery meant it could never function as the tank it sort of wanted to be, and Gen 6 gave it nothing new. I really have very little to say here, it was down and never used. Sorry, buddy. But a high note to end on, perhaps, Polyrath actually made it to top cut of US Nationals in VGC 2014, with a Politoed and an Electrode of all things on his team. The team was pretty much what was expected. Belly Drum, Protect, Waterfall, and a Rock Slide for spread damage. And that last slot actually had options between Earthquake and Brick Break as well. Both great moves in VGC. You can read Polcast Nationals report in the link here, which we'll put in the description as well. And some mistakes on his part potentially prevent his team from going further, but it still made quite the impression. And that's it, so how good was Polyrath actually? To be honest, not great. Listen, Bulky Water is one of the oldest archetypes in Pokemon, and if all you're bringing to that is a fighting type that hurts it more than it helps, you're not really gonna do much. Polyrath's only niche came in Belly Drum and Circle Throw, but other than that, it's almost painfully mediocre, in stats and in move pool. It hasn't gotten any love in a long time, and if it doesn't soon, we can expect it to keep sliding down. Thanks for watching, everyone. As always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And of course, as I always say, comment on what video you want to see next. And thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And of course, thank you to all of you as well. Also, follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.